for the market access and enterprise readiness, bridging the gap in handloom value chain session. This session is co curated with HSBC under Living Looms of India project. Uh, for this session, I warmly welcome the moderator for the session, Professor Minakshi Singh, to take her place on the stage. I would like to invite on stage our esteemed panelists now, uh, Mr. Siva Devi Reddy, founder Goku, <laughs> Ms. Neetu Kapasi, lead communication and advocacy, purchasing and logistics, South Asia IKEA supplier. <laughs> Mr. Nagaraj Prakasham, co-founder and CEO at Native Land and partner at Acumen. <laughs> Mr. Vijan Paul, former director of the Weaver Service Center, Ministry of Textile, Government of India. <laughs> Today, I am happy to invite two of our uh, women artisans who are present here with us. Uh, from Kota Doria cluster, uh, Hasina Banu and Bilkish Banu. Didi, stage uh, I now hand over the session to Professor Nashi Singh to uh, take it forward. Thank you, thank you, Anuma. And uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. Mm. The food has really made us dwindle in the our audience has really dwindled after the lunch. No, no, not the lunch really. After the snacks. So in any case, I think I expect that whoever is here is really interested in Hanlo, therefore they are here. So a very warm welcome to the panelists. Uh, I will not be able to do justice if I introduce them. So as we hand over the mic to people, we will, I would request them to introduce themselves before we have a discussion. So, uh, hand loans. When we say hand loans, what comes to our mind? Anyone, I mean, generally we say audience will, uh, you know, interact later in the end. So, when we say hand loan, what comes to our mind? Made of hands. Made by hands on a loom which is functioning by hands. So in India, we have a very long tradition of handlooms and uh, agriculture ke baad, I is, is it okay if we do Hindi English? Because I can see there are a lot of people in the audience who are actually uh, artisans and you know, Angrezi apni matra bhasha nahi hai, to hum Hindi English mein karenge chalega na sabko? Okay, great. So handloom jo hai, wo agriculture or handloom hand in hand chalta hai. जितने भी weavers थे सबके अपने अपने खेत होते थे खेत में वो खेती करते थे और फिर जो टाइम बचता है बिकॉज़ खेती में पूरा टाइम तो हमें ऑफिस की तरह तो है नहीं कि मॉर्निंग टू इवनिंग वी हैव टू सिट इन द ऑन द चेयर सो द मदर नेचर इज ग्रोइंग ऑन इट्स ओन एंड साइड बाय साइड पीपल वर डूइंग द वीविंग सो दैट इज हाउ आवर इंडिया वर्क्स और इंडिया को सोने की चिड़िया क्यों बोलते थे हम हमारे क्राफ्ट की वजह से हमारे स्पाइसेस और क्राफ्ट की वजह से पूरी दुनिया यहाँ आई थी और उनको हम द सोने की चिड़िया वी वर नॉन एस ऑफ कोर्स इट्स अ लॉन्ग हिस्ट्री द कॉलोनियल पीरियड हार क्राफ्ट्स रियली वेंट डाउन बट ग्रैजुअली द क्राफ्ट्स आर कमिंग बैक बट दैट प्रोसेस हैज बीन लिटिल ग्रैजुअल एंड ऑल ऑफ अस हैव टू ब्रिंग इट बैक टू वॉट वी वर एंड आई फील इफ एज गांधी जी सेड के be the change that you want to see in this world. If each one of us vows that I will wear hand loom or wear hand loom or wear hand loom, then today we have no problem in the hand loom society, in the hand loom sector. Because users are not, the market is not, the demand is not, then you are going slowly and slowly. So after post-independence, the Indian government did a lot of effort. Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay, Kukul Jaikar, they made a lot of effort. एक एक घरों में जा जा के looms निकलवा के फिर से handloom शुरू किया है. So handloom sector is a very important sector after agriculture. We all agree to that. But what is the state, current state of the handloom sector? What are the challenges? क्या problems वो face कर रहा है? वो आज हम discuss करना है और बहुत policy changes चाहिए. हमें एक जुट होके कुछ काम करना है तभी हम इस एंडलूम सेक्टर को वापस 
अपने चरण सीमा पे ला सकते हैं हम इतनी सुंदर साड़िया होती थी इतना सुंदर और अभी भी भाई क्राफ्ट इज अ लिविंग ट्रेडिशन इन आर कंट्री यू नो We are still following our traditions. Therefore, crafts are still existing in our country. If we had just completely become anglicized and westernized and had not followed our tradition, we would have not. We still wear our sarees. In Japan, people are still struggling to wear their kimonos. You know, the younger generation. But we still wear our sarees, and it is a huge round of applause for the women of the country. We still wear our sarees, and a huge round of applause for Naga Ji. <laughs> so, हम अपना traditional हमें we have to be proud of what we are. We have to be proud of our traditions. Only then can we take it forward. So, with this little introduction, I would like to uh, introduce Hasina Mano and uh, Milkis. है ना Milkis Mano जो कैथोन कोटा के पास 15 किलोमीटर अवे फ्रॉम कोटा देर इज अ प्लेस कॉल्ड कैथोन विच इज द हब विच इज द क्लस्टर फॉर अ ब्यूटिफुल वोवन सारीज दे मेक ब्यूटिफुल वोवन मटीरियल आई एम श्योर ऑल ऑफ यू हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन हैंडलूम नो अबाउट इट तो कोटा डोरिया इसको बोला जाता है उसकी बड़ी अच्छी हिस्ट्री है कि ट्रेडिशनली इतना पतला कपड़ा राजस्थान में नहीं बनता था राजस्थान इज अ वेरी एरिड स्टेट बट द किंग ऑफ फोटा हैड गॉन टू माइसोर एंड वहां से उनको देखा कि उनको गिफ्ट में इतना पतला और सुंदर कपड़ा मिला तो वहां उन्होंने अपने किंग को बोला कि आई नीड वीवर्स सो दीवर्स ब्रॉट फ्रॉम माइसोर सो इट इज ऑल्सो नोन इज मसूरिया फोटा मसूरिया सो इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल मटीरियल तो मैं हसीना बानो जी और बिल्किस जी से चाहूंगी कि आप ये बताएं कि आपका इतना सुंदर कपड़ा है और गर्मियों में मैं तो कुछ और पहनती नहीं हूँ कोटा डोरिया के अलावा मतलब इट ब्रीथ सो ब्यूटिफुली इट इज सो एलिगेंट एंड आई जिस डोंट नीड टू इवन स्टार्ट इट इज सच ए ब्यूटिफुल मटीरियल तो इतना सुंदर आप लोग कपड़ा बनाते हैं तो अभी जो है उस कपड़े को बनाने में कोटा डोरिया में क्या प्रॉब्लम आ रही है आप लोगों को थोड़ा उसके ऊपर बात करेंगे मेरा नाम बिंकिस बानो है मैं विवर हूँ कोटा डोरिया बनाती हूँ तो कोटा डोरिया बनाने में मैम बनाने में तो परेशानी आती है जैसे कम उम्र में हमारे आँखों की रोशनी चली जाती है हमें बहुत कम दिखने लग जाता है क्योंकि वो बहुत बारीक धागा होता है बहुत ही नाजुक धागा होता है उसको देखने में बहुत ज़्यादा परेशानी आती है हमारे जब तीन तीन चार चार टूप लाइट जलानी पड़ती है हमें उसके बाद में वो धागा में नजर आता है रेशम कॉटन तो फिर भी थोड़ा मोटा होता है और रेशम तो बिल्कुल बारीक होता है तो उसको बनाने में हमें साड़ी बनाने में काफ़ी टाइम भी लगता है साड़ी तो हम जैसे तैसे हम बना भी लेते हैं बाकी उसमें एक तो हमें मार्केटिंग की बहुत ज़्यादा जरूरत है बिल्कुल और हमारा प्रोडक्ट इतना अच्छा है बाकी अभी तक भी हिंदुस्तान के अंदर इतने लोग मतलब उसको नहीं जानते कि कोई लोग तो जा पहचानते नहीं है कि कोटा डोरिया होता क्या है तो इसकी पहचान बनाने के लिए हमने उस पर एक लोगो का भी इस्तेमाल किया है हमने उस पर एक लोगो डाला हुआ है हाँ, लिखा हुआ भी और अभी अभी हमारा एक प्रयास और चल रहा है उस पर कि हम लोगों के साथ साथ जो विवर उस साड़ी को बनाता है उसका नाम और उसके साथ में मोबाइल नंबर उस साड़ी के ऊपर डालने का प्रयास हमारा चल रहा है बहुत ही अच्छा ये तो पहले इंडिया में ऐसा ही होता था अब अब अपना क्राफ्ट बेनाम हो गया है है ना किसने बनाया ये पता नहीं अब हम वेस्टर्न लोग आके बोल रहे इसकी स्टोरी चाहिए हमें हमारे तो पहले जो हर क्राफ्ट बनता था उसमें जो भी उसका मेकर था वो ऑलरेडी उसने अपना नाम छापता था चाहे वो प्रिंटर हो चाहे वीवर हो वंडरफुल आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी गुड इनिशियट बहुत अच्छा और हमारे देखिए सर है ये लिविंग लुक लिविंग लूम इंडिया के 
है जो इन लिविंग रूम इंडिया के मैं डायरेक्टर हूँ और इनके आने से हमारा काफी प्रयास और आगे बढ़ रहा है ये लोग हमारी बहुत हेल्प कर रहे हैं मेटेरियल के बारे में भी हेल्प कर रहे हैं डिजाइनर के बारे में भी हेल्प कर रहे हैं और इनसे मेरी यही रिक्वेस्ट है कि ये थोड़ा और ज्यादा हमारी हेल्प करें धन्यवाद हसीना जी आप भी बताइए कि प्रॉब्लम क्या आ रही है देखो सब अच्छा है वो बड़ी अच्छी बात है बट हमें किस चैलेंजेस क्या है हमारे आई हैव जस्ट रिक्वेस्टेड देम टू सर्कुलेट द कोटा डोरिया सो दैट पीपल कैन फील इट एंड गेट द फील ऑफ द मटेरियल नमस्ते सबको मेरा नाम हसीना बाबू मैं जिला कोटा राजस्थान से वहां से पंद्रह किलोमीटर मेरा कैतून गाँव मेरे दादाजी जैसे गांधी जी की जो ओढ़ते थे चद्दर तो खादी बुनते थे दादाजी फिर दादाजी के बाद में पापा पापा ने जैसे धोती मलमल तो वो काम किया फिर पापा के बाद में हम पैदा हुए तो मैसूर से कोई मसूरिया लाई था उस मसूरिया हमारे खेतून के अंदर मसूरिया नाम रखा कोटा डोरा साड़ी का उस कोटा डोरिया को हम बनाने में मतलब पूरा परिवार पूरा दादा से लगा के नाना बाबा सब मतलब एक एकजुट होकर ही काम करते हैं उसके बारे में काम करने के बाद में हमें बहुत अच्छा लगता है कि पूरा परिवार हमारा जैसे पढ़ाई भी करती है लड़के लड़कों को भी पढ़ाते हम ऐसी बात तो नहीं है कि लड़कों को नहीं और लड़कियों को पहले तो पढ़ाते भी नहीं थे मगर अब तो ज्यादा से ज्यादा पढ़ाने लग गए लड़कियों को मगर फिर भी कोटा डोरे साड़ी इतनी अच्छी अच्छी बनाते हुए विदेश में भी आजकल साड़ी का बहुत निर्माण है मगर हमें कोई मार्केट अगर अच्छा सा मिले तो वहां कोई कस्टमर भी मिलता है हमें उस कस्टमर की वजह से हमें कोई तो हमें, हमें जो प्रॉब्लम मतलब जो समझ में आई है इन दोनों के बाद से कि मार्केट इनकी प्रॉब्लम है बनाने का कोई दिक्कत नहीं है इनके पास बहुत अच्छा हुनर है स्किल अच्छा है बट बनाने के बाद कहाँ बेचे मार्केट इनका सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है यही सही समझ में आई बात सही सुंदर सुंदर जैसे डिजाइने तो इतनी अच्छी अच्छी है अभी आपको मेरे मोबाइल में भी है बहुत सारे डिजाइने और इतनी अच्छी अच्छी बनाते हैं हर एक मतलब पचास से साठ हजार एक अस्सी से एक लाख तक लगभग हमारी साड़ी बनती है पांच हजार से स्टार्ट है तो लाख सवा लाख की भी हमारी साड़ी आपकी हसीना जी और ये वहां पे के डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू कोटा वेमेन वीवर्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जिनसे ये बिलोंग करते हैं एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो खाली लेडीज का है और उसमें ये बहुत सुंदर काम करते हैं तो आप बताएं कि के करीब एक महिला या एक परिवार कोटा डोरिया घूम के कितना कमाई कर सकता है एक वीवर ये ऐसे हमारी छाए तो मतलब कोई ज्यादा मजदूरी नहीं है हम पूरा परिवार जैसे पांच इंसान होते तो पांच मिलकर हम दस से बारह हजार बनाते हैं और बच्चा हमारा चार से पांच साल का भी काम करता है कोटा डोरिया के अंदर तो वैसे ज्यादा मजदूरी नहीं है हमारी मगर फिर भी बहुत अच्छा ऊपर वाले का जो जो पांच पर पांच लोग का परिवार मिलके काम करता है तो महीने में ये दस बारह हजार दस बारह हजार कमा लेते हैं अगर सारा अच्छे से काम करें तो और जो थोड़ा कम काम करता है जिनका परिवार छोटा है कम लोग काम कर रहे हैं तो फिर वो उससे कम होगा तो ये भी एक समस्या है कि हमें हाउ डू वी इंक्रीज देयर इनकम बिकॉज डेफिनेटली इफ वी नो दैट टेन टू फिफ्टीन ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड इज नॉट मच फॉर अ फैमिली ऑफ फाइव सो दैट्स अनदर चैलेंज दैट वी नीड टू गिव दम अ मार्केट एंड सी दैट देर इनकम गेट्स बेटर और जैसे हर एक में होता है स्कूल होता है तो वहां भी बड़ा मास्टर होता है तो हमारे कोटा डोरिया के अंदर भी कुछ बड़ा भी होता है कुछ छोटा भी होता है कोई दस हजार का भी करता है कोई पांच का भी करता है कोई दो हजार का भी करता है उसका परिवार ऐसा ही चलता है उसके अगर मकान नहीं तो मकान किराया होगा तो उसके बच्चे मतलब नंगे भी फिरते हैं और किसी का अगर अच्छा होगा कमिश्नर होगा कोई जैसे अभी अस्पताल में भी 
हर जन होता है तो ऐसे भी हमारे भी मतलब सभी है सब लोग है हमारे केतु के अंदर भी सर्जन भी है डॉक्टर भी है नर्स भी है मुंशी भी है तो ऐसा ही हमारा कोटा डोरिया भी मतलब इस तरह so basically she is trying to say that in one organization in their cooperation also there is somebody who is a leader after that there is someone and they all have different uh, responsibilities so they uh, want the synergy फिर हम वापस आएंगे आपके पास so I would like to introduce uh, Mr. B B Paul I know him since a very long time uh, sorry I think I forgot to introduce myself. I am Menakshi Singh and uh, I teach at the Indian Institute of Crafts and Design (IICD) Bharatiya Shilp Sansthan, which is in Jaipur. The Rajasthan government opened it in 1995. And uh, the government of Rajasthan thought of opening something like that because Rajasthan is a really rich in crafts and they thought they must do something for developing the craft sector. And uh, uh, NID was approached. And a feasibility report, the two faculty members from NID uh, traveled, spoke to a lot of stakeholders and on uh, basis of the feasibility report given by uh, NID, IICT was started in 1995 and in 1999 the education program started. So uh, I am one of the founding mem uh, faculty members uh, left NID, my husband and myself were both teaching at NID and we left NID and IICT joined here because it is so unique. और इतना सुंदर कॉन्सेप्ट जो है ये देश का ओनली इंस्टीट्यूट है जो क्राफ्ट सेक्टर पे फोकस करता है टू डेवलप पीपल एट क्राफ्ट सेक्टर और हमारे यहाँ स्टूडेंट्स आते हैं पूरे ऑल ओवर द कंट्री से और अब काफी एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम्स भी हो रहे हैं फ्रांस से यूके से बहुत इंटरेस्ट आ रहा है लोगों को कि आके यहाँ पे पढ़ाई करे सो इनफैक्ट हसीना बानो जी की ग्रैंड डॉटर यहाँ पे अगर आर्टिजन भाई बहन है तो उनके लिए मैं बोलना चाहूंगी कि हमारे स्कॉलरशिप है आठ बच्चों को नीला हाउस करके है जो स्कॉलरशिप देता है बच्चों को वहां पढ़ने के लिए तो आप लोग बोलिए कि बच्चों को अप्लाई करें ताकि उनका फ्री एजुकेशन हो सके आई सो आई टीच एट द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड डिजाइन एंड आई हैव बीन वर्किंग इन द खादी एंड दैंडलूम एंड द क्राफ्ट सेक्टर इन समाइम and uh, i have also had some experience of working in the retail sector where uh, fab india i was the first store manager of fab india when they started in uh, rajasthan and uh, you know we i also uh, opened a, a, a museum shop in the city palace museum in uh, jaipur because when princess wanted that you know we should have a museum shop so it was like a three years project and from the scratch to uh, you know developing it into a fully uh, functional shop uh, it took us 3 years but that was a very good so it's, you know i have had these experiences of working in the craft sector and i have done projects with access also therefore i am here so uh, since i worked at iicd and uh, mr paul was at weaver service center to itna acha aur sundar kaam waha pe hota tha aur hamara itna acha collaboration tha Mr. Paul, please introduce yourself, and I would really like you to throw some light on the government because you have done work in the government sector for more than 40 years. So, what are the government's policies for handling? What can the government do now? What can the government do now? Thank you. Uh, I have got a small presentation. I think I will speak all the government's mission for there. Nirshi Jashi, you have said absolutely. अपने 95 से हम लोग जुड़े हुए हैं एक दूसरे से जो आईएसडी जब अप्लाई था मैं भी जयपुर में जॉइन किया था और मेरा परिचय मैं एक जैसे सीना बानो एक बुनकर है कि मैं भी एक बुनकर हूँ मेरा पहला परिचय तो ही है कि मैं भी जैसे ये भी बुनाई कर रहे हैं मैं भी बस बुनाई करता था मेरी बचपन बुनाई से ही बिता बाद में मैंने पढ़ाई की टेक्नोलॉजी फिर मैनेजमेंट फिर गवर्नमेंट में सर्विस शुरू किया तीन साल पढ़ाया फिर एज ए टेक्नीशियन या वीवर टेक्नीशियन बोलिए तो अच्छा रहेगा और फिर एज एन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर इन दिनिस्टर आई कंप्यूटर ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी ईयर्स उस दौरान हमने काफी बुनकर काम करने का मौका मिला जब इनका पहला लास्टर प्रोग्राम हुआ था इंडो के साथ आई वॉज दे आर विथ आई नो हर फॉर लास्ट थर्टी ईयर्स तो ऐसे ही हर तरह की सभी क्लस्टर में मैं काम किया हूँ क्योंकि लंबा बहुत लंबा था इट वॉज लॉन्ग पीरियड फोर्टी ईयर्स इन द मिनिस्ट्री My posting was also in different uh, states. I was also went to uh, Cambodia for establishing a Central Museum. Uh, uh, 
नेपाल में भूटान में बांग्लादेश में सार्क कंट्री से सभी काम किया मैंने और मिनिस्ट्री में मैं करीब तीन साल कंसल्टेंट था रिटायरमेंट के बाद और अभी मैं कंसल्टेंट तो तनीरा एक ब्रांड है टाटा का टाइटन का लेटेस्ट ब्रांड टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन से शुरू हुआ है उसको मैं कंसल्टेंट हूँ यही है मेरा भविष्य यही रहेगा कि मैं एक बुकर हूँ भले ही मैंने सर नौकरी कर ली या कुछ कर ली लेकिन अभी मैं इनके साथ ही हूँ धन्यवाद Uh, now you know this is a big uh, is buzzword sustainable. You know everywhere very very go it is sustainable. मतलब टिकाव है कि नहीं? Sustainable का असली मतलब क्या है? जैसे आज हम जितने भी चीज use कर रहे हैं, consume कर रहे हैं, whatever we are consuming, air, water, you know uh, uh, the natural uh, amenities. Whether we are living those things in a right state so that our new generations. Our son, our grandson, their grandson, they will get it or not? Is it too much polluted? It is too much scarce. Are you are you consuming uh, beyond our uh, requirement? If if we are doing really, it is not sustainable. We have to leave our planet as a, as a really uh, fit for living with a good uh, atmosphere. And there are three basic pillars for that. जैसे कि सोशियो इकोनॉमिक है देन इन्वायरमेंटल है देन सोशल सोशल इकोनॉमिकल एंड एनवायरमेंट दिस आर द थ्री पिलर्स व्हिच इज रियली द पैरामीटर्स वेदर द एक्टिविटी इज सस्टेनेबल और नॉट नाउ फॉर हैंड नाउ फॉर हैंड लोन देयर इज नो डाउट यू नो इट इज रनिंग फॉर द लास्ट फाइव थाउजेंड इयर्स is there any sector which is so old no is it not it is sustainable so there is not there is no point of not talking handle is sustainable till we have to prove yeah it is sustainable you know handle or the textiles it is it is it is the basic thing earlier it was roti kapda makan but to my mind it is kapda roti makan now the preference is kapda fast roti you can have uh, We can, uh, you know, maybe one day without roti also we can do, but without kapla, can I? So our preference is kapla, roti, and maga. But handloom has really a big, big role. It, it was there, it uh, is there, and it should be. So my paper is for that only, past, present, and future. So why it is like that? Why it is so sustainable? Now you can see the uh, the the presentation. The World Bank said. There is a lot of shifting, and we are seeing by World Bank. We are seeing in our own eyes the people are leaving the village and going to the cities. You can't believe now in Kerala, most of the Bengalis are in Kerala now, right from cultivation to the construction everywhere. Go to Tamil Nadu, though there is land being created, everything, but still there is so much of shifting. And if that shift goes on like that, what will be the condition of our country? What is the condition of our village? What is the condition of our, our cities? See the slums, Mumbai, Delhi, wherever. So, is, do we require that kind of life? No, certainly no. Is it not? Nobody wants that kind of life. So, this is a total is big shifting is happening now. Food security will be hampered. In Punjab, unless the people from Bihar goes, there is no cultivation. So these are the things that are really going to be a big challenge for us if we if we really do not go for the sustainable activities. And uh, yeah, the handloom context. See, the, you know, handloom has a huge number of skilled artisans, huge number of skilled artisans, and it is not only the activity of producing cloth. This is the activity of our social system. You go to northeast. A, a girl won't be married if she does not know how to weave. Similarly, a boy goes for weaving will be killed by a wild boar. So they are the things, they are the custom, they are the beliefs are there. Even religion. So we offer. You go to any temple in the south. We offer the new fabric or new garments to the to, to the deity each and every day. So though it is it is attached to our religion and culture and it is totally social activities. And this activity is such that more than seventy percent women are working, are engaged in handloom activities. Elderly persons can join. 
above 50, above 60, above 70, small activities like winding, walking, they can do. So, the, so each and every body can uh, uh, play their role and, uh, and help them earn more. So it can give a large number of livelihood to the people. Because if one group runs, directly three people are getting jobs, apart from the indirect. So there are many people that if you want, but if one Paul who runs, he kills 10 handle, 10 handle into 3, 30, and if it is an automatic loan, it kills 30 to 40 handles. Of course, it will be there in the in the insect will be there, in the soil will be there. Because there are certain fabrics and if you will continue we consider our population, handle cannot beat out that kind of product, that kind of production, that kind of supply. So naturally all will be there. But even then, handling has a big role to play. Because it is low capital investment. Only 40,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees the handle can run. Minimum capital is required to run a handle. And eco-friendly, which is sustainable, no? Eco-friendly, there is no emission. There is no air pollution. Neither those fiber, dust, you go to the mill, dust or flying. People have to eat good molasses because of the other they will be having TV. If you go to England factory, they eat wood, good, no? The molasses, otherwise you will be after the TV. But hello, it runs at the speed of 60, 70 or 100 uh, uh, picks per minute. So it, yeah, there is no dusting, there is no flying, fibers flying. So here is pure, no sound pollution. It is always below 50 decibel, not like power. So these are the things, and it does not require the electricity to run alone. Somebody told handle means run by hand, is it not? But that is not 100% true. It is true. A, a loop which is run without power, it can be with hand, it can be with leg, or it can be hand and leg. And most of the hand looms are run hand and legs. Both hands and both legs. Okay, so that's the difference of handloom. And about khadi, you must know what is handloom and khadi. Khadi also the looms are same, but khadi's yarn is hand spun, the raw material is hand spun and hand woven, so it is khadi. Handloom is yarn is mill spun and woven by handloom, so it is handloom. So these are the two differences. And if you look at the past, as I told you, it is more than 5,000 years old. We got the sample from Manjadaro and it reached to peak during Mughal period. You know, there's that time our, our, our muslims, because our, our country is famous for muslims. You know, the cotton is the, is the indigenous fiber. 10 minutes. Uh, so, the muslims, you know, there are different names. Sabnam, Averama, you know, the running water, dew, all those things. Because if you spread that fabric, that muslin, on the grass during autumn or winter, you can't see the fabric. It is so transparent, it is so transparent that you can see the only grass. When it is wet, you can't see the, the light passes through like that. So, these are muslins. 500 count. Even today, you go to Bengal in Kalna and Murshidabad, you can get still 500 count muslins. With no mill, no spinning mill can we uh, spin. So these are the areas which are really the glorious past of our country. But even there are certain uh, products still going on, but may not be that intricate. Designing may not be that intricate. So the patolas, the jamdanis, karis, first balishuri, kajiburam. Somebody brought a balishuri sari here. But the street balishuri, the things are sometimes, you know, misnomer. It is a sarnachuri because they are put the water in the jerry, in the gold jerry. So it's called sarnachuri. Balchuri is not uh, using any jerry at all. That is the difference between Balchuri and Sarachuri. So, like then Ajara, many, there are so many products. You take any name, it is available in our country. And as my told, this is thanks to our women the, who has really kept the sector alive. They are engaged, 70% 70, 70 people are engaged, the person is engaged for production and for consumption also. Downfall started with the British rule. You know, they started uh, bringing the, the machine cloth, a cheaper rate, you know. And in fact, in, uh, in, why not, in, uh, I mean, why in our country, in 1785 or 86, first power was invented. In our, in our uh, country, it came in 1818, 1818, first mill was started in Kolkata. That is before, I mean, 200 years ago, all were handled. This is not, their population was less that time, but we, used to, we could make it. We could export it. 
So that was all still, but because of this different problem, come with the problems also. So these are the glorious past of our country. The prince is set up. This is very alarming. Very true. We, they have made it in rage. <laughs> see, as per census 1995, see. In every 10 years, we make a census in the ministry. I was also a part of the census only. So there were 34.835 lakhs handouts, which came down to 23.77 lakhs. This is a downfall, heavy downfall. And the number of handout workers, 65.5 lakhs, and it came down to 43 lakhs. And the last census of 2019-20, they are showing the handouts are more, 27.01. And uh, number of weavers have come down. So there is little uh, confusion about these two figures. But number of handloom workers has come down. This is very, very vivid. Uh, you can see people have left the job, they have gone somewhere, either for machinery work or for some other work to different cities. So this is really alarming. Why? Because simple one reason. More than 67% weavers are rupees 5000 rupees a month. Less than 5000 rupees a month. Can you tell anybody go for handle weaving? We can't. How can we promote that? How can we compel a family to work within 5000 rupees? The whole family. You are telling 4 months old kids to work. I have to do it. 4 months old kids to work, then the clothes will not be there. Chora saal ke nishi ke bachche hoonge toh kapla koi nahi kardega aapko. It should be child liver free. Aap bataiye jo 5 saadar se government loo kaam kare. Oh is 67 percent. Two third. This is government report. And this is fact. So this is the condition. No young persons are taking up this profession. Whether it is educated or non-educated. Jo non-educated automate chala jata hai. Auto chala jata hai. Riksha chala jata hai. Liver ne kaam karta hai. Bunai mein nahi gata hai. Or to educate them, naturally go for higher education. Uh, you can see the young weavers reduced from 49 to 42. The young weavers are going back. <coughs> education, you see, the education 50% workers are just primary and less. Primary student and less. And only 6%, we have got 35 lakhs, only 6% are under cooperative fold society. 94% are totally unorganized, scattered, micro. 70%, 72% is the individual workers and 20, 25% are the master leaders or the master entrepreneurs. In spite of that, in spite of that, more than 95% of handcrafted textiles are made in India. <laughs> that, is the, that, is, that is the point, we should really bank upon it. There are some countries in the Asia, Asian countries like Bangladesh, you know, Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka is almost gone, uh, uh, China, Japan, but they are in a very small quantity. Commercially, uh, we, make, we have got all kind of, whether it's a hand weaving, hand crafting, all kind of craft is available with us, all kind of silk is with us, all kind of silk, all kind of wool. The, the finest wool is the Pashmina, is from Ladakh. Not Kashmir, this is from Ladakh. The course is ruled from Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh. The, the thickest fabric or the carpets are being made in India and the finest muslin five hundred is also made in India. So it's a huge range, huge range, can't believe. Similarly, they should go to the printing, block printing. They have got the natural dyes, many cluster natural dyes, there are many clusters with the dyes, hand painting. Embroidery, Jardozi, Chikankari, you take anything, it is there. But with that, I think I have covered all those things in the stain. Now, weakness, oh, sorry, previous one. Weakness, there is huge competition with the machine made cloth. Uh, cloth will be made in machine, no doubt. But they should not be sold as handmade. There is my point. People are cheating the customers. Manufacturers, the suicide, the, the, who has got the mills, who has got the problems, they are cheating. They are selling it in the name of handloom, though it is not made in handloom, and they are getting the premium price for it. There is a stiff competition, and not a, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, 
level playing and the low productivity also is a big concern. We require appropriate tools. Yeah. Thinking of because otherwise it will just take on. Because the are there and they are not Similarly, no credit. How the weaver will do? 70% is an individual weaver. How they will get the credit? Government started giving the credit. They took the credit, they do not how to really handle it. So they become defaulter. Again, now they are defaulter. No bank is giving unless you pay the full amount, the previous loan. Need for technology acquisition. There are many beautiful technologies now available. I have to advocate those technologies. Uh, this because of the time constraint, I could not show you the video clipping how it can be done. You know, there are the booty, booties for the bootas. The buta booty, they do one by one, one by if there are 10 of the binti hai, ek ke baad binti hai. Lekin ek aise sleeve nikal gaya, jis mein ek ke baad mein 10 booty lagaya. To usme aapka kaise 3 guna, 4 guna production bad gaya tha. Multiple booties se. To ye weaver from Assam has developed, Deepak Guru. Dilip Guru, he has invented. So these are things available. We need such kind of operation. Unorganized, they don't have any marketing, they don't know how to do the marketing of their products. In fact, they are not really with the market. They are just busy with their own production. Marketing is done by somebody else. So that communication has to be busy. And migrated, migration is going on and on and on. So these are the weaknesses. Uh, the government scheme, I can focus on this a little more. There is a big scheme called National Handling Development Program, NHDP. It is on now, till 26, 2026 it is there. They have got cluster development programs. If you have got 300 loops or 200 loops at one place or at one village, you can get up to 2 crore rupees. Government will give up to 2 crore rupees. There are many small companies, say drop down menu. You have got the looms, you have got the accessories, you have got the training, you have got the marketing incentives, you have got the solar light, uh, you have got the exhibitions, uh, everything is there, walks in, everything there. So this is the cluster learn program for 200 looms for 2 crores for 3 years. Marketing assistance, you get a lot of money for going for exhibitions anywhere, either in the, uh, in the city or in the uh, district, the district called village for the district level events, then national level is the Handloom Expo, state level is state level expo, outside also. So there are such schemes which can give you the money, 80, 20, 90, 10 different ratios plenty of money in the scheme. There is money in the scheme. Uh, take my point, it's in the scheme. Similarly, mega handloom cluster. Mega handloom cluster is a big, at least 10,000 handlooms has to be there in that particular area. And the government can give up to 20 or 30 crores rupees. Again, again there are so many uh, broad down menus. You can pick up anything and work for them. But 10,000 look, Handloom is a cottage, no? It is a household activity. So 10,000 loops at a place is not possible. It is not realistic. Anything is going on. Then welfare measures. Welfare, there is about two schemes for the Bhima Jojana. Government gives the premium. One is for the premium, they get the accidental loss also they get. Government gives the premium or the state government. There are certain ratios, it is all there. Then raw material supply. It is done by NHDC, National Health Development Corporation. You can get the EAN from them with 15% subsidy as well as the transport cost freight charges subsidy. There's a capping. If it is silk, you can get 6, six kilo per loom per month. Any kind of silk. Similar if it is cotton, from uh, 10 kilo to some 60 kilo per, per loom as per the thickness or thinness of the EAN. For the woolen, linen, all those things are there. You can get. Problem is that you have to give 15% advance. And while taking the delivery, you have to make a full payment. So these are the constraints which we are, are not in a uh, good position to take uh, the benefit of all those things. Then have to judge back. This is very, very important. We have also had a talk with uh, uh, Devi also. There is an act 1985. That act was been made 1985 just to safeguard the interest of the handlooms. There are earlier it was 20 items which are reserved for handloom. Now it has been uh, uh, minimized to 11. There are 11 items. Sari, dhoti, angavastram, you know, towel, all there are many things like that. Lungi, 
uh, of certain specific cases, not all, not all sarees. People should not, uh, you know, uh, 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 think that oh, all sarees are in hand. It's not that. It is certain conditions are there. Those sarees can be made one in hand. But nobody follows. Nobody follows. Policy makers does not follow. Nobody. This is, a, this is the basic thing I tell you when I go, we feel pity really what is happening. You go to any exhibitions, any exhibition, part of the government, either state or the central or whosoever, 90 percent fabrics are missing there, are being sold as a handmade. So, this is all happening. So, there is an act where you cannot make such things in all. Even government give fund to establish such offices in the state. If you have got uh, 5,000 power looms in your state, you can have an office there for enforcement. He can be uh, taken to the court or he can be uh, jailed, all those things are there. But it is not being implemented to the spirit. Otherwise, it is it, uh, that. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. So, I'm going to the future. How can it be? <laughs> Government has got beautiful scheme, beautiful money, each and each and every component. But they are not providing sufficient budget. Every year, at the end of the year, there is no budget. Scheme there, and the scheme money there, but no, you don't have money in your pocket. How can you spend it? So, these are the so government is not recognizing. So, I was a part of the government for 43 years. I'm still telling you, government is not recognizing till today. It is a employment generation center. Potential. Potential things. And it is very sustainable. It will restrict migration of the weavers, skilled weavers from to cities. <laughs> they are not. I feel personally because this is under textile ministry, where mill sector and pollen sector are also working and they are more powerful. So the lion's share may be going to them. Maybe. We go for that way, you can uh, think it. So it should be like the Khadi has got to MSME. Earlier it was rural, sector, rural development, now it has got to MSME. So such kind of handicap to think, whether handloom or handicap, should not be the textile. This is my personal, my whatever I gain well, from my I long experience. The craft sector needs a separate ministry. Separate ministry and should be under MSME. Handloom should be separate, handicraft should be separate. So, and as I told you, there is no budget. Earlier it was in 1000 crores, now it is some 100 crores, 200, 300, 400 crores. It is not sufficient. We have got 35 lakhs handlooms. We have said that 300 crores is nothing for there is a peanut. Then you have some that. You see, the, 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 uh, unless this is really uh, implemented to the spirit, handloom will be suffering like this. There are missionaries, they are simply overlooking because of the, as I told you, Big brotherness, the power rooms, they are more powerful, they, they do whatever they think they do, but this is going on. But government can do it, government has got that, use that permission, they can do it. And for popularizing India handloom brand, handloom mark, this is very vital role, or vital tool rather, I can say. We, we did handloom brand that was launched by Prime Minister in 2015 Chennai. It is a big we all were of the same opinion that unless the weavers' wages are doubled, nobody is going to continue this profession. They will be just going away. And these are the two areas where we can work. India handloom brand work, there are four or five basic things. It should be natural fiber, it should be child labor free, it should have very azure free dyes with a good fastness ratings, and social compatibility. So, all those five things we have taken together first now. So that you can, you can, you can produce better quality fabric, you can get premium price. Their standard have been done. It was done with the textile committee. I was also to be a part and parcel of that thing. They you know how we work closely. Similarly, handloom work. You see, we cannot tell our competitors, Paul Loom and Billman, to put their level. They will not never. Why they will? Because they are getting them. But our handloom weavers, our handloom weavers must put handloom mark level. That this is made on handloom. Then only you can differentiate your product from machine made and all. Then that is the only solution. This also being implemented through textile committee by WC and NSGC. 
But again, this is how hot it. It has to be on a mission basis. Every product which is handmade, there should be mark, either dot mark or handloom mark level. Then only customer will know this is handloom, 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 and handcrafted. And there has to be a uh, big, small for only handloom, handcrafted. Now nobody knows where actual genuine handloom, handcrafted materials are available. You have seen in Jalpur such a beautiful thing, handcrafted thing, are selling on the road. So much of pain, so much of labor, so much of skill have been put up behind it. If you go through those Jalpur and those, they are just bargaining like anything. So that is not the place for them to sit on the on the roadside. Government started, government started handloom in 1987 88 But again, there are schemes called uh, Urban Heart. There's enough money for that. But the machinery, the zeal is not there, the implementation is not there. Uh, and, and we must uh, teach our new generation what is really handcrafted thing. Handloom, handicap, this is our not only bread and butter, but it is our in our blood. We live with them, we die with them. A Northeast lady who weeps her Iha or Pasha or Pishtuan, with her cremation, that particular family goes with her. To the creation. So we live with handloom, we we'll die with handloom. So that kind of thing is with us. So much of skill, so much of potential. Why our new generation don't know? They know they don't know all those ladies, but I look this thing, that thing. Why? They should know our own tradition, and for that, government has to take initiative. Nobody can spend that much of money. Corporates are now coming, now. but even the government has a big role to play to advertise, to make those things very much popular among the new generations. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. I think that was a overall pura hume handloom sector mein ghuma diya hai. Uska plus, minus, challenges, opportunities, threats, weaknesses. Government ne kya kya kiya hai? I mean, if you look at those schemes, it is amazing. The kind of schemes that the government has come up with. But sadly, implementation is a problem. But you know when it comes to giving it is not there and I think what uh, you threw a very good light on uh, government to kar hai, but corporate sector is also coming up and individuals are really coming up. I mean we have uh, you know like two individuals sitting here on the dais and uh, we will hear from them how individually how they have got the handloom to a completely different level. Yeah, one, one, one point just want to add, uh, as a now I'm consulting in Canada, the Tata Enterprise, we have seen this thing very closely and since I was in for the last four years, we thought why will people come? They have seen their forefathers, their father, sitting in the pit, you know, they are on the pit low, they are, half of the body is in the pit. They live and die with that one, they could not come. So that kind of negativity has come to their mind, they are living. So what we have started, we call it the Uyva Sala. We can see in our site also, uh, in tanira.com. We have, we have tried, we are trying now to make a beautiful corporate body-like workshop for the hand of weavers. Just corporate office-like. It's a mosaic, tile flow, lighting. Each and every room has got a light, fan attached to the individual room, washroom, dining table, drinking water, uh, uniform, those things have started and people are coming now. I give an example, we have made it in two, uh, two in Banaras. People who left the job going for auto rickshaw pulling, they are coming back. 8th of February, we are going to make one more in, uh, in uh, near Payambatur. More than 200 people are coming and curious to see what is happening. They are also asking, please give us job, please give us this loan. So the bottom line is that we need, if, if people earn money and they earn it, with self-respect, people want to do that. Yeah. And why should they leave their age-old uh, tradition of weaving and go to something else? Why should they go to Amnarenga? But that is what they are doing right now. So I think this is a great initiative by Tanera and uh, Sally Holkar ne bhi uh, ek weaving school khola hai. Puri dunia se, matlab puri uh, India se wahan log aake weaving sikh rahe hai young generation. So that's really, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you Mr. Paul. Uh, Naga, I'd like to really, um, 
hear from you first introduce yourself to the audience and then you know your experience of how you have really uh, come up with uh, and uh, naga ka ek jo bahut interesting concept hai ke handloom ko mehanga banao taki har ek ka uh, income badhe so over to you na sir sir it to 150 sir it keep it short sir na and short na uh so if we see yeah. the numbers right uh, almost 50% gone in weavers population we can't blame them right and we cannot just put them and say keep earning 5000 rupees we want to enjoy a 2000 rupees sari because you want to be keep weaving so we have to change the narrative i think the timing is fantastic for us to start looking different on the craft sector look at the picture we are just still uh, selling putting four people in the picture right so we have to come out of <laughs> there's no poor beaver in the picture we have to be take pride in our product we have to start telling that this is sustainable fashion because no energy is utilized in making that then you start looking at about the theory of change for craft is that i make this controversial statement everybody is not happy but crafts should not be affordable to middle class right if it is affordable middle class they're going to be like this one look at what they are wearing and what i'm wearing so we are consumer of their product they can't wear their own product that they are making right she is working on last 15 years and making 15000 rupees why would their grand daughter or son will work on weaving board they live that's best they are living that's a fantastic for them but now we have an opportunity to remaining 3 million people who are weavers what can we do we are change the narrative if we just keep looking at government to bail out i think we are going to be talking this 75th year is gone now 150th year also will be talking the same thing how do we protect this weaver who left maybe 5 lakh back then right so this is what there is opportunities available because now doing good is being celebrated right the guy elan must be the minister 1 billion dollar of the carbon credit how come 3 million weavers how much carbon we are saved so can we start looking at it second is about the craft should be premium right they are not machine we cannot expect volume from them. they are artist they are not artisan they are artist you can't ask uh, you know husain and sit there and make me a picture in one day it's going to take one month but he is rewarded accordingly but we don't reward them accordingly right so what the theory of change craft should not be affordable to middle class everybody in craft sector have not understood how to market the crafts they are all want, wanting dole from the government give me some grant i'll go support some weavers In instead, we have to spend time about how do we market these crafts to the people who appreciate, and then the authenticity part of it, right? We have India handloom market. So this Doti is India handloom market. I found out when I was walking in the airport, they frisk it, the metal, it started making noise. The security guard was doing two, three times what he had. He said, "Guy, this is original silver, but look at how many jerseys you have. They are plastic. It doesn't make any noise when you go to the airport." so authenticity so how do we ensure that when you get the premium it is 100% organic cotton a kabi a gold jewelry or silver jewelry sell it at 2 lakh 3 lakh and then prove it why it is through technology right the other startup i'm going to support support now is putting a device on a handloom so it's going to capture the movements of viewer is making and then take a picture with the what done so you know the geolocation lat and la so this is made in manipur not made in china so we will know that from there and the qr code is woven with there you scan it will tell you that where it came from how much carbon it saved automatically carbon credit should go to the river so this is about sustainable fashion no longer please don't put this poor people picture on try to get grants from government we have to come out of this government mindset learn how to market hand handlooms that's what we have to do otherwise this 35 lakhs will go away in the next 20 years we don't need this conference handloom and crafts in india is closed we can do that so we don't need to worry about this part if we want to sustain this we have to think different i think for that all of us learn marketing products and then talk to sure talk about once you sell at 2 lakh rupees a particular crafts have a bad trade have bad price pass the benefits back to them so today there are luxury products available in india there are bmws running audi running but people when you come to the handloom they start bargaining that of a wine is 1 lakh wine is 2 lakh and even people are selling at 1 lakh 2 lakh those sarees all these lahangas all plastic we want shiny stuff all plastic 2 lakh people are willing to pay such consumer you have no idea i went to this popular uh, you know silk store in in chennai these guys put advertisement like left and right i said give me a silk with a silk mark 
that is not there available they put movie stars to market 2 lakh saree but it does not have a silk mark i said i want silk mark and he has go talk to the manager they brought this one saree which has silk mark so this is a problem from the consumer perspective as well that we need to understand how do you identify the authenticity from our side we have to prove the authenticity properly so all the fake guys are out of business thank you thank you naga we will come back to you again uh, neetu is from ikea all of us have heard ikea about ikea it stands for absolute quality it stands for good design it stands for big numbers so ikea has come to india and where was the first store in hyderabad and we have heard the story of what happened on day one so this is what ikea is all about so uh, neetu is here on this uh, platform we would like to hear from you uh, you know from the back end because you have huge uh, orders you have big numbers to play with so handloom how do you see handloom and uh, you know from the back end point of view sure for those who don't know what ikea is ikea is a home furnishing company based out of sweden uh, and we have retail stores across the world in india we have five stores and we are also present online in nine cities i belong to the ikea supply part which is the part of the value chain where we work with our partner supply partners to produce goods made in the region south asia which i represent but goes to the global value chain that means anything made in india would of course be catered to the indian market but also go to market in russia china us uk wherever you may name it uh, when it comes to uh, the topic of uh, you know handloom i just want to go back to what minakshi ji said in the beginning you know for us handloom is a technique anything which is handmade or hand woven is handloom we in ikea love it and a part of our product range is handmade carpets and rugs which is what is a weaver producing uh, with his or her craft we make it possible to be sold and with pride put in any house around the world a craft and ship reaches a home so that journey we do when we work in the back end we look at three key aspects to make it possible because you know with the change in climate uh, with the change in uh, what we are seeing in the society with pandemic with many other inequalities coming around one of the responsibility which companies like us hold is to really make supply chain resilient and long term sustainable especially where there is an artist or an artisan involved now what we do is we focus on three things one is we really start with the basic which is infrastructure how do we provide infrastructure to the artist or the artisan to take care of his or her craft so what we do is we produce carpets or rugs in an industrial setup with our supply partners which we call weaving centers these weaving centers are run and in collaboration or run and front ended by our supply partners and what they do is they provide an infrastructure where a weaver can come out of the house in a setup meet other artisans practice his or her skill learn a new skill have a good canteen facility have a transport facility have a crush for the children and medical facility and what not so this is very much required because it is like you know this part our business partners or supply partners really believe in ikea values and also create help us fulfill our vision which is to create a better everyday life for the many people but also the coworkers in the supply chain so that is our first uh, you know basics second we focus on inclusion as we know that traditionally handloom craft or you know is was not meant for women and so are the machines not made for women but we want to create equal workforce which is gender diverse and also not only our coworkers in the shop floor who sell the product should be equal but also who make should be equal so we focus a lot on inclusion of our women into the workforce now what these infrastructure through weaving center does is 
it brings women out of the house traditionally like banerji was also saying women are not educated they are not supported to work outside the house so they also drop out of the work art or craft because they are married or they are migrated or they have child uh, care facility you know need on them or they are exploited by the middleman which is very prevalent in fields like this so when you have access to a weaving set weaving center producing directly for a company without a middleman there is a tremendous inclusion which we bring and our supply partners encourage women to come and that's where a women who may know the art can work or who doesn't know the art can also work so there's a lot of focus on skilling reskilling and a variety of skills the third thing when you combine infrastructure and inclusion which is very important is innovation traditionally the handicraft sector was not made for women the machines are not made for women so it is very hard for the women to work on a heavy loom and move around to make a product like a carpet or even to hand knot so what we did was we innovated uh, looms to focus on the ergonomics of the women body so that she can work with ease and move left to right right to left and you know produce a product with ease which she knows or even for the men and we saw uh, punja loom is one example which we innovated and we saw we could increase the productivity the capacity and the inclusion of women by 30 to 40 percent through that loom wow. now that That's loom good. has been in for more than decades been bringing women to workforce which is an excellent so punja loom for us is an example we share with pride which is really truly leading with change and innovation keeping people as a biggest asset at the center of whatever we do and keeping you know the core of business intact so when you combine infrastructure inclusion and innovation what really comes as an outcome what they are all also after is income really fair working conditions equal wages equal for men and women you know whatever the worldly hours are and that really helps them to sustain their living be independent and also sustain the craft in long term and another outcome of this is also inspiration for the younger generation if you see like ma'am said centuries of craft goes out of the crack because they are not able to sustain but when you combine all these elements of infrastructure innovation inclusion income you actually motivate the new generation to come and join and be part of carrying the legacy so that's what we do at ikea you know with pride we want to continue making beautifully handcrafted products like carpets or rugs and take it to many many homes of our customer around the world but do it with responsible sourcing and really keeping the art and craft at the very center and providing people a very long term sustainable you know supply chain where they can be respected treated fairly and paid equal so thank you thank you thank you so much i think this whole thing about fair wages fair trade that is what is at the core of what you are talking about and uh, in fact i don't know how many of us know that there are 17 sustainable development goals out of that the handcrafted sector touches upon 12 of them there is no other sector that is so close to sustainability so when we are talking of sustainability we are already matlab india mein hum log paidaishi sustainable hi the hamare gharon mein itna sa bhi kuch fekte nahi the aaj we have this whole big problem of solid waste management where we have landfills which are becoming mountains we were not that society hum log हर चीज को रीयूज 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 इज वो हमारे जहन में था बट नाउ वी जस्ट यू नो वी हैव बिकम वेस्टर्नाइज एंड दिस होल अर्बनाइजेशन वेस्टर्नाइजेशन एपिंग द वेस्ट हैज कन्वर्टेड अस इनटू अ कंप्लीटली नॉन सस्टेनेबल सोसाइटी एंड द नाउ द वेस्ट इज टेलिंग अस दैट वी शुड बिकम सस्टेनेबल एंड यस एंड दे आर डिफाइनिंग द स्टैंडर्ड सो यू नो दिस इज व्हाट वी आर सो वी हैव टू रियली गेट बैक टू व्हाट वी वर our original get back to our roots and we were the best so uh, looking into that steve uh, whatever we have heard from uh, the various speakers 
uh, a lot is coming down to income a lot is coming down to you know we have the skills we can do it well but how do we generate income and how so that will come through marketing and here we have a very good example of a great success story of how he has completely transformed the the marketing of the handloom sector so over to you shiva please introduce yourself and tell us about your success story yeah thank you meenakshi ji um i think uh, we still in a long way to go i think uh, that's what i want to start with as far as marketing handlooms is concerned but essentially you know what we are doing and why we are doing it i think the the main problem we are trying to solve is what was just described jo uh, bilkis ji ne aur uh, hasina ji ne jo bataya tha humko ki problem jo hai unka main problem hai marketing market linkage has been the biggest problem for the handloom sector बट इसमें दो बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट पहलू है आई मीन देर आर टू डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट टू दिस प्रॉब्लम राइट वन इज आर वी ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ सेलिंग अ कोटा डोरिया सारी एक्सपेंसिव कोटा डोरिया सारी बेचने की हम लोग प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर रहे हैं दैट इज वन पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम द सेकेंड इज आर वी ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम वेर द वीवर गेट्स द मैक्सिम वीवर गेट्स लेट्स एन इम्पॉर्टेंट शेयर ऑफ द the value that the product has created in the market because these are two different problems because agar saadi bechna hai to bahut sare organization saadi bech rahe hai right nalli bech raha hai itne sare organization saadi bech raha hai to fir bhi weaver itna kyu itne sare designer hain who have been able to create luxury market export kar rahe hain new york mein dubai mein unke there are so many uh, you know brands which have opened outlets are there weavers out of poverty i don't think so so the problem is 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 not only to sell the product but how do you make it equitable how do you make the market equitable to the producers to the makers so these are two different problems that we are looking at and as paul ji said and as meenakshi ji said india has no dearth of skills we have excellent you know uh, 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 skills in hand in hand looms right i mean we have more than i think uh, 3000 crafts if i am not wrong different craft forms in this country right in handlooms itself at least there are more than 60 major crafts that we all know right and handloom varieties that we call that we are aware of hundreds of clusters across the country so there is no dearth of skills 3.5 million weavers overall you know the number of looms all that i think paul ji has explained also from a market standpoint i think there is good market there are still people who want to buy a authentic kanjivaram saree for their wedding how many of you today know a place where you can buy an authentic kanjivaram saree 100% uh, yeah maybe i think there are a few places ma'am uh, yes there is a village with the same kanjivaram uh, kanjipuram yeah so you have to go to all the way to kanjipuram to buy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly my man by the way even if you go to the village you don't know whether it's a original kanjipuram sari as well they were living in 30 years back yeah exactly ma'am but i think today we don't know whether it's really a silk sari and as paul ji said forget it may not even come from kanjipuram right it's not even coming from that state most of the kanjipuram sarees which are sold are not even coming from tamil nadu by the way so i think uh, solving the problem of selling craft is one part but also making it equitable to the artisans is the other part um, so but we do see lot of demand right i mean good demand is there not only in india but also outside india bahut sare aise customer hai jinko authentic kota doria sari chahiye but how do they know that you know there is an organization like this in uh, uh, near kota 15 kilometers from kota which is women managed women led which is making this authentic products inke bare mein unko kaisa pata chalega so that is the reason or that is the whole purpose why gocoop was started in 2011 uh, gocoop is india's first platform marketplace platform for weavers and artisans uh, we started off with a whole objective that we can empower our artisan community uh, our craft community through technology we can create identity and awareness not only for the artisans but also for the craft how many people really know what is muslin jamdan for example how many people know what is baluchari and in fact i think today paul ji has explained the difference between baluchari and you know other crafts which are similar 
so not only for creating identity and awareness for the artisans or the craftsmen but also for the craft clusters where we are producing these products and then connecting them with market that is the whole objective why gocop as a platform was started uh, almost 10 years ago uh, we have worked uh, uh, almost in 70 craft clusters across india we work with mainly cooperatives we work with small micro entrepreneurs or master weavers we also work with self help groups and other social organizations like producer organizations or ngos in craft clusters we give them training on we digitally enable them we give them training on product design development we give them training on how do you price your product suitable to the market and then we take them to market both on our online platform as well as through our offline platform we also have an offline platform called swadeshi and uh, the main thing change that we are seeing through this effort is today an artisan was never come out of the craft cluster after a few years now they are comfortably able to market their own products they don't have to rely on any big buyer to come and give them demand khud jaate hain exhibition mein apna product bechte hain comfortably people who are not even educated are able to come online and are able to comfortably sell their products being in their own village without even having to come outside the village so one is it's not just about selling the product but as i said earlier empowering the artisan community so that they can market their products themselves and the maximum proceed of sale should go back to the artisan community so uh, i mean since i'm talking about this i want to also share some numbers we have over the last 7 years since we launched the platform uh, sold over 100 crores of merchandise on our platform and 85% of that sale value has gone back to the artisan community that is the power of platforms right i think uh, i was in another session this morning and we were debating do we really need platforms or not but yeah i think in an ideal world an artisan should be able to sell directly without anything right but if you think of the the already you know the challenges they face access to technology access to marketing uh you know the required manpower and skills to to really take the products to to market having platforms or other organizations like even like fair, uh, uh farmer producer organization or weaver producer organizations i think an, an entity or a platform is very much required which can handhold artisans and help them go to the market and that's exactly what gocop has been doing for the last uh, you know uh, 10 odd years and uh, i just want to conclude saying that there's a lot happening uh, in in the world right around sustainability there's a lot of focus on consumers uh, today that they want to buy good authentic handmade products and that is the market which i feel is growing today though we see all these challenges i but as far as demand is concerned i see the demand actually growing for handmade but the challenges are misrepresentation of products as i said today kanji swaram sarees are not really kanji swaram right so banarasi is hardly banarasi they are all coming from surat so this kind of misrepresentation of product has to has to is the biggest challenge we face but if you are able to address some of these uh, uh, challenges on on the on the misrepresentation side and at the same time we work on enabling these artisan community right digitally enabling them getting them ready for to markets you know preparing them for markets i see that we can easily double the artisan income you know within our lifetime right i think it's not like we don't have to see the same statistics in 2029 when we do the census again but we should be able to see a much better artisan income lot of younger generation coming back to craft sector if we are able to focus on empowering the artisan community and not just focus on selling handloom sarees thank you absolutely wonderful thank you so much uh, coming to that you know actually uh, it is because they did not see value they moved out but the moment they see value so there are so many examples of artisans who see value in what they are doing their their ancestral uh, work and they come back with pride so i think such stories are going to uh, increase as you said and there's a huge uh, demand which is increasing for uh, handloom and handcrafted 
therefore you can see the world coming to us therefore you have ikea in india because we we have a big market we are a big market ourselves and we are a big producer uh, market as well so we produce as well as consume so uh, even when pandemic came the world was hit quite badly of course we were hit but our percentage was much lesser than what the others were affected with so coming to that uh, what uh, i mean we can open it to the audience if there are any questions message for us from pradhan uh, i have a very naive question so forgive me for my lack of awareness uh, see i am really interested to know uh, how was it since the uh, i mean the quota doria the, the trap the is a uh, ancient uh, trap right so how was the market in those days because market has opened to the entire india lately right so there must be some mechanism which was sufficient to generate you know to to consume within locality to sub suffice the artisans so what was that and why that market is not in non existent today that's one question and let me put the second question also uh so i understand what uh, the naga sir has uh, put very well but what is the lookout of the weaver company towards the market so how we want to keep it as a niche product want to generate uh, you know as a, i mean revenue from the volumes or because we can't ask uh, 1.3 uh, i mean 103 30 crores people to purchase a sari worth 5000 rupees So if it's a niche product, then we should not cringe much about the competition with the pearl loops. So what is the lookout of the community for the marketing? Because market is, you know, a cross-cutting issue for. Can I take the first question? That's an absolutely very uh, good point. That uh, you know, craft always had patrons. You know how when what I said, the kings got quota Doria to quota uh, and Kethon, and then. इट वॉज अ रूल दैट इन उनके दरबार में जितने भी साफे पहन के आते थे लोग बिना साफे के कोई दरबार में आता नहीं था साफा जो भी पहन के आता था वो कोटा डोरिया का ही होना चाहिए सो देर वॉज अ मार्केट क्रिएटेड फॉर इट आई कम फ्रॉम जयपुर एंड आई टॉक अबाउट क्राफ्ट इट्स अ बिग हब फॉर क्राफ्ट विच वेन जयपुर वॉज बिल्ड अबाउट टू हंड्रेड एंड एटी ईयर्स अफो इट वॉज इट इट डिड नॉट एग्जिस्ट so how did it become a hub for craft because they were patrons because they were visionaries they built jaipur and hand picked artisans from different parts of the world gave them land gave jagir diya unko har ek ko apna apna haveli diya okay now you sit and work here so in jaipur it's a beautifully planned city and uh, we have different uh, like ek lakheru ki gali hai maniyaro ka rasta where the artisans have come from different parts of the world they are doing lakh ka kaam now jaipur is a hub for uh, lakh jaipur did not have jewelry and uh, it's a hub for jewelry because it was so there were patrons the market was created i just want to add ma'am to that saying that at least in our village as as we saw growing up right um i really uh, i know understand the question and uh, i can completely relate to it the community used to support the artisans right to jo farmers the unke liye saal mein char panch sadiyan jo jo cha chahiye tha wo bunkar banate the aur unko saal mein festival ke pehle hum log anaj dete the hum log used to give like bags of rice right in exchange to the we the sarees that you know weavers were making so not only patrons but community used to support right this was the local market it used to be that's why they were that was if there was a golden era for craft it was during patronage from the royal families and also patronage and support from the community both these things didn't make the weavers you know like this where they have to uh, you know wait on a middleman or you know somebody else some corporate to come and buy the local communities to support them and that's the uh, an important aspect of how markets have changed now and can we go back there is it possible to go back there there are definitely new markets which are coming up may add something here you see the quota etc those built was for the safa as ma'am told but the safa was not with silk it was only cotton just 6 inches cotton and the cotton also used to be grown in rajasthan bharatpur area even indigo used to be grown there those are the days 
uh, and very truly only those days uh, those big people used to have the sofa with the tricotri design colors aam aadmi ke liye it was all white even fabric also used to be white those the old and days british period it was all mashakat everything was just you know there is no market there is no artisan everything was pretty scattered ruin then then uh, uh, kamla devi chakrabarta hai uh, she was very close to uh, political uh, they has got a lot of influence then later on people the jakar the cooperative movement started from the first five year plan government invested a lot of money for making cooperative primary cooperative societies but anyway it didn't work i told you only 6% are under cooperative four apex they made the apex societies apex of all those primary societies they don't need to work they made head of corporation these are the organized sector in the government so that they can take care of things but that also didn't work now the concept of producers company it is very promising because that will be run by the artisans themselves and that is a good chance for marketing from them provided they are uh, trained they are educated by them. because what we have seen whenever there is a project running on going on there everything goes on because there is somebody to guide them there is somebody to take it further but among the artisans very few places have come <coughs> so if the local people are trained and this producers company concept will be the ideal one we have seen it uh, tata trust has got an uh, program called antaran we started in six states maniavan one artisans are here from maniavan odisha we started there we could we could make about 15 master trainers or sorry entrepreneurs we have trained them they are the entrepreneur now and they have their own brand and they are being online one such weaver has reached more than one crore annual through his self so these are things are coming up the producer company said because cooperatives uh, we do not see any and scope in it because it is not in a true sense cooperative is going on there is no sharing of the profit no sharing of the work nothing is going on so producers company will be the best option for that uh, at this point moment see pehle kya hota tha artisan knew their customers you know kiske liye bana rahe unko exactly pata tha so they were not nothing called designers then the artisan himself was a designer they knew ke uske liye kya best rahega aur wahi wo design isliye hamare jo purane designs hai which are which we see in the museum they are so beautiful aesthetically they are so so much of a higher level you can't see a flaw in them because they knew their customers now someone else is buying they have no idea who is buying their uh, so now it's a very mixed and a very um, you know a confused uh, vocabulary of design the second question i'd request uh, naga to answer yeah see the industrial revolution came in to make things faster and so cost of production reduced the mass can afford everything but we are in a false narrative still we are thinking that even in the industrial revolution we need handloom to be that price that is what putting them in poverty so we are not differentiated between the power machine machine made versus hand made and we are saying that today even you get a big order they can't produce they are not machine they are artist they are chain the world they are not artisan they are artist that means that there is going to be impurities there is going to be slow in production so then how do you avoid them? so we can't make them robots and automation of handlooms also you are going to power so we should not do that so that means might as well do power loom as well so that's what i was telling kota saree should not be sold at 3000 they should stop making sarees at 3000 bucks everything should be available 20000 above then you are not competing with the industry made product so today that's a problem right you wear a nice uh, authentic saree kanjivaram it costs 50000 bucks your friend will laugh at you you paid 50000 or you are loser you know i bought it on amazon but 5000 rupees so that is plastic it's not kanjivaram it is not handmade she has no clue but she will make you lose your sleep that night right wow why did i pay 50000 bucks she made only 5000 bucks so this is what we have to stop making this lesser product and they said that anything handloom should be about 25000 rupees then if you start then don't compete with that industry made product that is a that is a mistake we are doing in the handloom sector we are want to compete with the industrial product we should not let it be people want cheaper product go buy amazon whatever cheaper 100 rupees sari all plastic no no nothing wrong but if you want a handmade authentic uh, kota it is 50000 rupees so that she would live like well 
and she will wear her own saree and they not today so this is what the narrative need to change if they don't change and it's going to be reduced by right? 30 years it went by half and it's going to reduce we can't blame them and people are going to leave the profession because it's not so fit so this is what we have to be aware as well the from the middle class people want to consume yeah don't buy this 10 pants at at 10% discount and buy one pant or one fabric which you pay very high price and be proud about slow fashion that i'm wearing this kurta which is authentic i pay 20000 rupees i will wear that in every tiktok video in the next two weeks because the tiktok videos make fast fashion faster right because i can't put the same picture every day in my dp i want to change the dp every day so you can't put it on hand loom you need power so that is what ignore that crowd ignore that crowd and we have to learn how to sell that to the higher volume even if it is percentage goes back it is better than that we need to get more entrepreneur like shiva who lava so that okay if i make that 85% can go to it. it is great that a lot of corporates coming into the sector but they can they say that 85% of what i am selling it goes to the viewer they have to make a statement that is what affordability should be uh, you know not for middle class once you start selling at higher price fair price both need to come in so that we will have a you know bando family still there otherwise next 20 years their brand daughter said children are not, not going to do it 35 lakhs will become 1 lakh or something so and may not be there in india there's nothing wrong but if you want to make that possible we have an opportunity to do it today because today doing good is getting celebrated so sustainable fashion is what we are pushing not please support poor weavers put some picture look don't look for sympathy absolutely so it's not sympathy which the um, craft sector and handloom sector is asking for it is pride that we have to take pride in our uh, tradition we have to take pride in our skill that is what we are and awareness i think awareness at all levels awareness of the market awareness the consumers have to be aware of what is authenticity and uh, you know selling uh, authentic thing and selling a non authentic thing together that is cheating so i think at every level awareness is really required and which will come through education so people have to be educated through uh, you know at various means so i think uh, we have been told that we are running out of time so any other question otherwise we can wind up yes. one last question we can take yeah it's a great session a learning session for us so uh, like i am new in this sector I represent Jaipur Rath Foundation. Company is like exist for a long time, but I am new in this sector. So my concern is like this: Bilkis Ji ne bataya ki hamara like income bahut kam hai, and we are also facing the challenge ki health se related ki aankhon mein problem ho raha hai. So kya aisa ham kuch ecosystem bana sakte ki jahan pe saare jaise Shiva Ji ne bataya ki they are doing the brilliant. I can also say ki we are doing both the well-being of the viewers. So kya ham ek jagah aake platform pe aake we can discuss or solve the problem of the well-being also sustainable. इनका बोल सो कि ऐसा क्या लर्निंग है हमारे पास शिवाजी के पास आई के पास जो दे आर नॉट एबल टू गेट कोटा डोरी एंड उनके लिए हम वेलबिंग के लिए क्या कर सकते हैं लाइक जयपुर फाउंडेशन आल्सो डूइंग द वेलबिंग फॉर द लाइक सोसाइटी व्यूवर्स के लिए दे आर फोर्टी थाउजेंड आर्टिस्ट दे आर गेटिंग सस्टेनेबल इनकम दे आल्सो डूइंग वेलबिंग फॉर दीवर्स हेल्थ कैंप कर रहे हैं आई कैंप कर रहे हैं सो कैन बी मेक अ प्लेटफॉर्म यर जहाँ पर मंथली सिक्स मंथ में एक बार आके लर्निंग शेयर कर सके गैप्स क्या है वो शेयर कर सके और उसको आगे ले जा सके देस द लाइक आज फ्रॉम लीडर्स सी माय थिंग इज देयर इज नो प्लेटफार्म फॉर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर्स टू डू व्हाट दे डू राइट यू जस्ट पे देम 1 लाख अ मंथ दे डू व्हाट एवर दे वांट सो इंक्रीज देयर इनकम दे नो व्हाट दे वांट टू सो देयर इज नो फोरम राइट नास्क आई मूव देयर टू जस्ट टेल ओवरसीज मार्केट दैट्स अबाउट इट राइट सो दिस व्हाट वी हैव टू स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट कम आउट कम आउट ऑफ दिस माइंडसेट that grants and development sector and all this part we have to just look like a business part now figure out a way to sell at the higher price compete not don't compete with the industrial products increase the price have a fair price to pass the money to them if we give her a 1 lakh a month you know what to do right we don't need a forum for telling them what to do so they are amazing people they are artists they have learned lot of skill because they don't have money we all will start giving them gaps or you should do that you do that right So this is what we have to do: increase their income. They know.
thank you panelists for such an important and very relevant discourse on this panel today. We have some revelations we will surely take back from here and engage with them. Uh, so I thank you all and as you walk down the uh, podium, I would like to give you all this token of appreciation. और इसी के साथ मैं हसीना और बिल्किस बानो जी का भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ कि आप इतने दूर आए और आपने हमारे साथ अपना वक्त और अपने अनुभव को साझा किया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल टू काइंडली हेड फॉर द फॉर लंच ब्रेक नाउ एंड वी आर गोइंग टू रिकनवीन हेयर फॉर टेक्निकल सेशन फॉर एट थ्री ओ थ्री ओ क्लॉक थैंक यू सो मच